ancient seafaring legends tell of mysterious islands drifting aimlessly on a sea of time. They may appear and disappear again anywhere in the vast expanse of the ocean, and they bring disaster on anyone who gets too close. Terrifying monsters inhabit these phantom islands, and dragon's nests lie hidden in their caves, according to the stories. But isn't there a grain of truth in every legend? Is it possible that once upon a time, dragons did exist? Or were they giant lizards, now long extinct? And could an unknown dragon-like reptile have survived somewhere on a faraway island? Scaly dragon monsters have haunted the legends of most ancient civilizations for thousands of years and it's possible the stories were based on real creatures of flesh and blood. Even today, the world of lizards is a bizarre kaleidoscope of countless species. There are more than 3,000 different kinds of lizards in the world. Some do look like the armored dragons that appear in fairy tales, but the list of oddities is long. The Gila monster, for instance, is the only lizard which has poison glands similar to a snake's. The Gila monster is only found in the southwest of the US and in Mexico. Its poison is used for defense, not for attacking prey or stealing eggs. Over millions of years, evolution has produced thousands of different lizards. But do we really know all of them? What if large reptiles are still undiscovered among the rocks of a distant island? What if the Dragon Island is not a myth, but reality? A piece of driftwood floats at the mercy of the waves. A tiny passenger has survived a sea voyage and is now drifting towards the desert island. Once it sees land, the lizard takes the plunge and swims for shore. Some new habitats are created by accident. With enough food and other lizards of the same species, a new species of lizard could evolve on the island. Maybe one day they could become giant lizards. Canary Islands are situated off the northwest coast of Africa. Some 20 million years ago, a plume of magma rose up from the depths of the Atlantic Ocean and created seven islands. The seafarers of the ancient world knew about these islands. Several original charts date back as far as the 13th century. All sailors were afraid of the steep volcanic coasts, especially during a fierce, raging Atlantic storm.
primeval heaths and misty forests of laurel developed on the Canary Islands. And deserts of windy sand dunes looking more like the Sahara formed alongside them. Some of the islands seem as hostile to life now as they did at the beginning of time. Perhaps this is why ancient legends tell of monsters and dragons living on the Canaries. A thousand years ago, the Roman scholar Pliny wrote about the island's lizards, yet he named the island group after the Latin word for dog, canis. There are dogs here. The Bardino, a large fighting dog with a striking brindle coat. It's thought the Bardino dogs originated in Africa. Somehow, they reached the Canaries and founded a new population. In ancient times, the Bardino was also called the predatory dog. The males can reach a shoulder height of more than 50 centimeters and weigh more than 40 kilograms. Over the millennia, reality and superstition blurred and mixed. Besides the Hound of Hell, the dragon inhabited the Canaries in whose honor a tree was named. A variety of the Dracaena palm that only occurs here. These palms are ancient, said to live for thousands of years. Their scaly bark links them in legend to the mythical dragon. Underneath this protective hide, the flesh of the tree is revealed with its strange animal appearance. And in medieval times, the Dracaena palm's red resin was thought to be dragon's blood. Unlike most other lizards, those of the canaries seem to prefer the sap of plants. They also like windfall fruit. Food is scarce on the harsh volcanic islands. Only the most adaptable will survive. These lizards grow up to 15 centimeters long, not quite dragons. But what if there was enough food on the islands for them to grow much bigger? There is evidence that the Canary Islands were visited by one of the biblical plagues more than once. Locusts stripping the islands of any greenery. They came from the north of Africa, traveling on trade winds across the open sea. But for the lizards, this was a feast on the wing and made a change from fruit. The smaller lizards had no problem in dealing with their new prey. For the bigger lizards, locusts were just bite-sized savory snacks.
But this concentrated food didn't turn these lizards into giants. Courtship among Canarian lizards is not at all subtle. Males use bright colours to impress the females. On Tenerife, males of Eisentrout's Canary Island lizard are belligerent, warning off rivals with threatening gestures. And if that doesn't work, a fight ensues. This fight is serious. The lizards can get injured. When a delicate tail is severed, it still wriggles, even after several minutes. It takes months for the tail to grow back. Professor Franz Steindachner, the director of the Imperial and Royal Museum of Natural History in Vienna, was an expert on reptiles. But one particular Canarian giant lizard was still unknown even to him by 1880. It would be Dr. Oscar Simoni, a pioneering explorer from Austria, who would eventually begin to solve the age-old mystery of the dragon of the Canary Islands. He was a professor of mathematics and physics from Vienna an enthusiastic natural scientist in all disciplines and, at the end of the 19th century, was regarded as an authority on lizards. Oscar Simone was familiar with the strict taxonomy of the animal kingdom, so he also knew that the fence lizard of Europe is in the same family as the canarian lizards. Both male and female fence lizards look similar to their relatives on the islands four and a half thousand kilometers away. But there was a difference. Compared to fence lizards in Europe, the islanders grew up into giants. During his expeditions to the Canaries, Oscar Simony was to lay the foundation for the discovery of these giant lizards. Between 1888 and 1890, the Viennese pioneer made three tours of Tenerife, the principal island. We don't know whether he knew that each island has its own unique species of lizard. The islands are far enough apart for them to have completely different, isolated habitats. La Palma is furthest from the mainland, 380 kilometers away. With the highest rainfall, La Palma is the greenest island of the Canaries. Tropical forests coat its rough, jagged mountains. And here, a small dragon lives on fruit. It might look like a dragon, but it's only 30 centimeters long. Lanzarote is one of the oldest islands in the group. Formed around 20 million years ago, it still bears the scars of its volcanic birth. The 
Lanzarote looks as if it just arose from the sea. Volcanic chimneys and lava crusts at 700 degrees still cover the ground in places. Living here means facing death. Even the toughest lizards won't always succeed. But evolution did produce the Atlantic lizard. However bleak and hostile the conditions, Atlantic lizards survived for millions of years and spread across the whole island. The Canaries are indeed islands on a sea of time. They're so isolated, unique local species have evolved, not only on land, but also underwater. Most of them, new species of fish. And as on the Galapagos Islands, made famous by Charles Darwin, the underwater fauna has adapted to these local conditions. The current known as the Canary Stream cools the waters around the seven islands, which many species of fish prefer. There's even a subspecies of the grey shark unique to these waters. These predators patrol the sea around all the islands and can reach a length of several metres. Early on, scientists began to suspect that the Canary Islands could reveal the secrets of evolution. The first explorers put up with harsh conditions in the hope of making great discoveries. Just a hundred years ago, a trip to the Canary Islands was a major expedition. There were untold treasures of nature just waiting to be discovered. Plants had evolved rare varieties that occur nowhere else in the world, like the three-meter-high Tower of Jewels, which originally only occurred on Tenerife. As well as the Tower of Jewels, the even rarer Echium alberianum also grows here. It's now strictly protected in the hope of preserving this variety for future generations. Insects have also evolved unique species, like this darkling ground beetle. Today, it's only found in a four and a half square kilometer region on Gran Canaria. Over thousands of years, this armored beetle has adapted to living in the desert. It doesn't seem to mind what plants it feeds on, and it's also very long-lived compared to other beetle species. This subspecies of the darkling ground beetle may live for one year or longer, a true insect Methuselah. And butterflies such as blues developed localized species. They only differ from their mainland relatives in minor details, an expert could see the slight deviations by inspecting the coloured scales on their wings. Some creatures of the Canary Islands are more familiar, like the canary bird. But the original canary wasn't as brightly coloured as the pet birds that have been created by intensive breeding. During the second half of the 19th century, several paleontologists traveled to the Dragon Islands, hoping to break new scientific ground. Bones were discovered, but before 1870, there were none that suggested giant lizards. Otto 
Oscar Simone would be the first to shed light on the ancient myth of the giant lizards. As late as in the 15th century, travelers reported that they had seen enormous reptiles, as large as cats and very ugly. In 1888, Oscar Simone traveled to Tenerife to explore the surroundings of Mount Teida, the highest mountain of the Canaries at 3,718 meters. The explorer scoured the lower pine woods, but he didn't know he was being watched. Oscar Simone was fascinated by the mighty volcanic cone of the Teida. He went on numerous strenuous walks to explore its surroundings. There were lizards everywhere and they began to catch Simone's interest. He pitched his camp in the middle of the harsh basalt landscape at an altitude of more than 2,000 meters. Even though he was a professor of mathematics, he was a pioneering explorer and curious about everything. He began a detailed study of the biology and geology of the islands. And he was fascinated by the lizards. He studied several species and at first there were no real surprises. But then, on a fine August morning, Simone made a discovery that would upset his scientific, ordered world. As he has done every day during previous weeks, Simone searches the area at the foot of Mount Teida, fascinated by all the different natural phenomena. But he's being watched. He glimpses a much bigger lizard, but it's fast and it gets away. In spite of his completely unsuitable footwear, Oscar Simone refuses to give in. All dangers are forgotten at the thought of catching a completely unknown species for scientific research. slips and falls, plunging 15 meters, but he's lucky. Only two broken ribs and a broken arm, and they won't stop him. But no matter how far he searched, he was never to see his giant lizard again. And it's still a mystery today. One year later, in March 1889, Oscar Simone returns to Tenerife and books a passage on the steamer Viera y Calvigo, which will take him to the smallest and most secluded island of the Canaries, El Hierro. For centuries, seafarers have known and dreaded the coast of El Hierro. The island itself is bleak, remote, and scarcely populated. At higher altitudes, it's covered with primeval laurel forests and heaths.
The mountains reach a height of 1,500 meters and are cloaked in cool, damp, primeval forest that seems eerie and unworldly. The coasts of El Hierro are formed of solidified lava. This island is the westernmost point of Europe. At the end of March 1889, Oscar Simoni arrived in this primeval scenery. His pioneering spirit took him beyond exploration into photography. His collection of photographs includes pictures of the so-called Roques de Salmor, giant rocks that he would eventually make world famous. At the northwest coast of El Hierro, the Roques de Samor rise steeply out of the ocean, reaching a height of about 40 meters. Intimidating, remote. Could there be any better refuge for dragons? These lonely rock towers were inhabited by strange giant lizards that looked like creatures from a long forgotten world. It was probably these creatures which the Roman scholar Pliny referred to as Lacertis grandibus more than 2,000 years ago. Compared to ordinary lizards found under rocks and stones, they were indeed giants. Almost a meter long, these lizards were even strong enough to overpower small animals. They preyed on mice washed ashore on the isles or young birds. Fishermen of El Hierro may have known for centuries that there were giant lizards on Roques de Salmor, but it was Oscar Simoni who, in 1889, eventually identified them as a new species. Simoni was able to catch several specimens of different sizes. The lizards were transported in special casks to Vienna for further study. The legendary dragon of the Canary Islands was no longer a mythical creature. Its discoverer, Dr. Oscar Simoni, made scientific history. The so-called type specimen, the first to be described of the species, is still kept at the Vienna Museum of Natural History. Collectors from all over the world followed, decimating the small lizard population on the Roques de Salmor, and changes to the environment had a devastating effect. Not long after its discovery, the giant lizard was already considered extinct. <laughs> but in 
But in 1974, new hope was kindled. The goat herd, Juan Machin, claimed that he knew where giant lizards were still living, on a steep cliff on the island of El Hierro. Despite his old age, Juan Machin climbed the cliff barefoot and produced definite proof of his claim. So, from 1974, he's been credited as the rediscoverer of the El Hierro giant lizard. In between the rocks of lava and desert plants, the lizards are difficult to see, especially when they stay completely still without the slightest movement. Today, Juan Machin's grandson, Juan Pedro Perez, is the expert on giant lizards and the guardian of the last surviving specimens. Pedro Perez knows the lizard's favorite spots. From time to time, he takes one of them down to the valley. A biological station has been established at the foot of the very cliff where the giant lizards were rediscovered in 1974. Here, the wild lizards caught by Pedro Perez are examined and their eggs are hatched out in incubators. They're carefully checked at frequent intervals. Once a young lizard has hatched, it is transferred into the sheltered kindergarten, where these unique reptiles can grow up in peace. Every year, around 50 lizards are reared. Both the wild lizards examined at the station and the young lizards are released again by Pedro Perez on the cliff. But the total number of these lizards is still thought to be less than 1,600. But giant lizards have survived not only on the secluded island of El Hierro. The most spectacular dragon can be found on Gran Canaria. Despite being the most popular island of the Canaries, there are still many secret ravines on Gran Canaria, almost unexplored territory. Even today, it's not easy to search all the numerous lava scree slopes and valleys for new species. There's even a small desert here, formed of pulverized shell limestone from the beaches and wind-borne sand from the Sahara, which is only 200 kilometers away. And strange tracks in the sand. There's something here. Compared to its better known relatives, this lizard is big, a giant. It seems that reptile species that are tiny on a mainland grow much bigger when isolated on an island. This giant lizard was only described as a separate species in 1901. The males are big-boned and extremely robust, whereas the females are much more delicate. Some specimens are said to be more than a meter long, but despite being so well built, the giant lizards of Gran Canaria are mostly vegetarians.
Their particular favourites are the fruits of the prickly pear. Once the fruits are ripe, they fall to the ground within easy reach of the lizards. The giant lizards of Gran Canaria eat anything they can. Trying to survive on a poor island means not wasting any resources. Sometimes, migratory locusts are carried on the wind to Gran Canaria from the African coast. For the lizards, they make a welcome change from their vegetarian diet. It's possible that these giants among lizards could be responsible for the dragon myth especially the rare specimens with a horned tail, which is really only a deformity. If the tail has been severed in a fight, it'll eventually grow back, but sometimes it creates a strange double tail. Until the Middle Ages, people firmly believed that dragons lived for thousands of years but they didn't know how real lizards reproduce. The giant lizards of Gran Canaria inhabit both the desert and the lava scree areas where there's not much vegetation. They make their nest here out of sight. Between four and 15 eggs are concealed in the sand. Once they start to sweat, the 80-day incubation period is over. This is a delicate phase. The eggshells turn transparent and the hatchlings can be seen inside, ready to emerge. Eventually, the little giant lizards break head first through the shell. These are the first ever pictures of a giant lizard hatching. The little dragons fight their way out of the tough shell and the troublesome yolk sac is cast off later. The hatchlings, about 13 centimeters long, quickly run away from the nest. Right from the start, they're on their own. There are enemies around, such as kestrels. These deadly efficient birds of prey don't just feed on young lizards, they'll take on adults as well. Hawks are traditional enemies of the Canary Island lizards. Humans had changed the landscape of the Canary Islands long ago, and by 2000 BC, when the Phoenicians sailed to the archipelago, it had already been inhabited by humans for a long time. These historical walls were built later, around the time of Christopher Columbus. They've been preserved almost in their original condition, but their purpose is still unclear.
The native people of the Canary Islands probably worshipped a distinct religious cult, indicated by the sacrificial sites that still exist, mostly high up in the mountains. Experts believe that these weren't magical sites where they carried out bloody sacrifices of animals or even humans. It was more likely they were sites for the worship of natural deities, content with goat's milk and plant seeds. The early settlements here are unusual in that, unlike other Neolithic civilizations, the native people didn't build houses or huts, but lived in caves. These were often carved out of the relatively soft volcanic rock side by side. Today, experts believe that the caves not only provided protection from the Atlantic storms that sweep in from the ocean, but also gave a pleasant room climate throughout the year. There isn't much left of the original people of the Canary Islands, the so-called Guanches. Only a few dry mummies and a few artifacts. By the 15th century, their entire civilization had been destroyed by the Spanish. Any that did survive the invaders' massacres were forced into slavery by their new rulers. Some mysterious carved drawings and characters have been preserved until the 21st century, but they still haven't been completely deciphered. There had been plenty of speculation about this historical graffiti, but it's doubtful whether their true meaning will ever be discovered. The civilization of the Guanches is still mysterious even today. Only one thing is certain. For thousands of years, the people of the Canaries shared the islands with the lizards and drew pictures of them in their stylized carved etchings. There have never been many animals on the islands that could provide meat. No deer or wild boars for the Guanches to hunt. The early hunters had to make do with what they could find. Lizards, quick to avoid capture. Hunting by throwing stones is a tedious job and probably relied more on luck than skill. But by the end of the day, the most persistent hunters would have caught something. Many aspects of the life of the early Canarian people are unknown, including their origin. The colour of their skin implies that their ancestors could have been light-skinned North Africans. clear whether the Guanches reptile hunting may have endangered or even caused the extinction of some lizard species. The technique of cooking reptiles over an open fire is almost as old as mankind. Even today, large lizards often appear on the menu in Central and South American countries, even at first-class restaurants. Lizards 
lizards were frequently on the guanches menu, as shown by archaeological finds of food remains that included leftover bones. It's also clear that the diet of the Canarian people included giant lizard species that are now considered to be extinct. Carved drawings on stone suggest that reptile hunting may even have had a ritual meaning. Today, human influence generates a different threat to the island's wildlife. The Canary Islands are a major holiday destination for hundreds of thousands of tourists each year. The natural environment has given way to an artificial world of concrete and neon. But the natural beauty of the Canaries can still be preserved to a large extent. There are secluded valleys where biological wonders are waiting to be discovered. In 1999, a previously unknown giant lizard was discovered on the island of La Gomera. A sensational discovery for both the international media and the scientific world. How did such a big lizard manage to stay out of sight and avoid being discovered until now? The answer probably lies in its habitat, which is very small and situated in a region difficult to reach. It is one of the most endangered vertebrate species and the rarest lizard in the world. Only 20 specimens are still alive. These pictures are the first ever filmed in the wild an extraordinary experience to come face to face with a newly discovered species that's still completely new to us. We are responsible for protecting this giant lizard of La Gomera. Just the fact that it exists generates the hope that there might be other completely unknown species to be discovered. Around 1940, a huge mummified lizard was found on the island of Tenerife. The length of the living reptile is thought to have been more than one and a half meters. Even remains of its skin have been preserved for thousands of years, in a condition similar to that of Egyptian mummies. So, could it be possible that this giant mummy has a counterpart made of flesh and blood? That a lizard of this size has survived? Maybe the time is not far off when another giant lizard, as yet unknown, will be discovered. Just think of the ancient seafaring legends and their tales of secluded ravines inhabited by the dragons of the Canary Islands. <laughs>